I wrote a book about using Git from command line. But Maxim, there are tons of books about Git. How is yours different? Mine focuses on imagination. No, seriously, you can save a ton of confusion if you imagine things a certain way. For example, let's say you have a project. This project has one file called textfile.txt. Doesn't really matter what's in it. It can be some Python or JavaScript code or some markdown. In the end, it's all text. You start adding content to this file. You add a line, you commit the changes to Git, and then you do it a few times more. Then you decide to switch to one of the previous commits. In real project, you might be searching for the commit where a bug was introduced. Now let's say that here it is, you found the commit where the bug was introduced and you decided to fix it immediately. Here, for the sake of simplicity, as an example, I'll just add bug fix to some line. What will happen if you commit this change? This is exactly where the right mental model becomes important. Let's say you imagine that a sequence of commits is like an array, so you can just insert a new commit at an index. That would be wrong. The right way to imagine it is a commit chain, where each commit is hooked to the previous one. Git works in such a way that you cannot insert a commit in the middle of the chain, because this would break the chain. What it will do instead is it will still create a new commit, but it will be dangling on the side. It won't belong to any branch, and this is not good. You will have to fix it. In my book, I explain how exactly are the commits linked together, how to avoid creating dangling commits, and what should you do if you ended up in this situation. You can get the first chapter for free on my website if you go to maximivanov.com books and then choose command line git. Or you can just click the link in the description. There will be a form where you can leave your email and get the first chapter for free. In the complete version of this book, we first go over the typical workflow of using Git from the command line. The idea here is to give an overview first, so you have a big picture. And then in the next chapters, we add more details. Every chapter also includes exercises. This is another super important aspect of learning. It is one thing to see or hear something, but it's a completely different thing to actually do it. Every chapter contains several exercises so that you can make sure you understand everything correctly, train your muscle memory, and actually get used to how things work. To make it easier for you to practice, I prepared example repositories. This way, you save yourself time because you don't have to run several commands to bring the repo to the state that you need. You just open a folder and start practicing. There is another added benefit of using example repositories. You can modify them to simulate problems that you might have in your projects. One of the best methods to solve a problem is to simulate it first in a controlled environment on a smaller scale. This way, you'll be able to try out different solutions and see which one works best. You can get the digital version of the book on my website, maximivanov.com, or if you prefer that, you can buy it in any of the online stores where it's published and even order it in paperback or hardcover forms. Alright, thank you for watching, have a great day!